Welcome, thanks for coming. Um, on this 31st of October, which is Halloween of course, yesterday we had a Halloween party here at the conference and I was dressed like this. I was the ghost of security standards. Very scary to us security professionals because yeah, we can relate to what this ghost is about. Too many standards, too complex, and they're weighing like a yeah, large weight around your shoulders. And OpenCRE is addressing this. OpenCRE wants to unite all these standards into one resource by using basically a gigantic index of requirements and linking every requirement to each standard on a requirement level. So let's say you're working on a specific topic in the OWASP ASVS and you want to learn how to test for it, you want to learn what the weakness means, you want to learn more about the threat, you want to learn more in some NIST publication about cryptography, it's all coming together in OpenCRE. Basically you need one link instead of 50 links or 10 links or 5 links, whatever you prefer, and OpenCRE will, will guide you to the right information that you need to do your job as a developer, but also as a procurer, as an auditor, as a, as a tester. We want to bridge all these silos, which is why this talk is called the Universal Translator for Security. So a bit about myself. Uh, I work for a software improvement group. We help clients create better software, uh, more secure, more maintainable. Uh, I have a lot of experience in AI security and privacy. I established the AI security practices at SRG. Um, I'm a lead author of uh, an AI standard, the AI lifecycle standard 5338 will come out in a few months. Uh, I advise the European Commission. Um, I'm active in multiple working groups, for example, for the European AI Act or the Cyber Resilience Act. And at OWASP, I'm involved at SAM, at the AI Guide, the Machine Learning Top 10, uh, the AI Exchange, and Integration Standards. And the Integration Standards Project, uh, which I lead together with Spiros Gastratos, who was supposed to be here, but he couldn't join for family reasons, unfortunately. But normally we do these things together, and we run the show together. We run Integration Standards. Uh, what we've built, for example, is the security wayfinder that you might have seen, the large overview of projects. That's one of the things that we built, and open series is also a result. And our task is to make sure that you know, the large variety of standards at OWASP uh, are more connected as one resource, and also beyond that, and open series is, is doing this. So how does it work when you write a security standard? can be anything, it can be a national standard. In the Netherlands, for example, there's a national standard coming up that uses OpenCRE as the way to refer people for more information. But it can also be a company wiki that has coding guidelines. So you write something up, for example, about XML security and the specific stuff uh, you write and the generic stuff that's you know generic information you wanna refer people to. So this is what you see everywhere. And then you see a list of References to some OS top 10 entries, some, some, some weakness, and that's normal, right? This is, this is the way things go. And sometimes this list is very long, it's not very clear why certain standards are referred. Uh, that's one of the problems. But the biggest problem is that uh, finding relevant security info today is, uh, is, is a struggle. This is a document by the ECSO. We have a little bit of feedback. Can you reduce my volume, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, this document from ECSO shows a list, just a list of all the security standards out there and it's more than 200 pages. So this illustrates that it's fast, complex, but it's also constantly changing. And this is something that bothers you when you want to create these references because this is what happens. Uh, mapping, so finding the right resources, takes you a lot of time. You typically pick the information that you are familiar with but there's much more out there. And you don't know all these standards, so you make some mistakes when you're referring. Uh, for some standards, like for example here the A05, it's unclear why it's referred. The reason is that A05 is about uh, injection. But it's not clear to the reader that why this reference is there. Um, some links are broken. I've seen standards where half of the hyperlinks are, uh, are broken, or they refer to an old version, uh, or 
well, they typically are always incomplete because there's so much to find based on your context and there's just you know, sort of a top of mind list of references there. And this is a problem. Basically, referring to standards is fundamentally broken. The result is that authors try to compensate for this. So if you have this coding guidelines wiki in a company, the authors, and that's what we see a lot, they are wrongfully trying to cover everything that's in the references. So they're trying to type stuff about cryptography and do a little copy pasting, but it's not the expertise of the author. So there are inconsistencies and mistakes in there. It's also quickly outdated because if you copy paste from a standard, you don't evolve with the standard. It's incomplete and it creates, ironically, more bulk and more fragmentation. So it adds to the problem. So one of the reasons why we have so many standards out there uh, is the fact that it's very hard to refer to each other. And actually, there is no real reason why we have so many standards out there. They're largely about the same things, but the reasons are uh, historic reasons, uh, um, uh, commercial reasons sometimes, psychological reasons not invented here. So there's a lot of standardization efforts, um, and each initiative is, is great, but there are many inconsistencies and incompleteness issues, which is uh, why we build OpenCRE. What this does is that if you have a section on XML security, you just have to have one link to OpenCRE, and it's a, it's a web application, and that link will show you uh, what to check, uh, how to test, uh, how to code deserialization, how to prevent um, entity injection as a coder, a link to the relevant top 10 entry, um, some rule in the DAS tool that you can use to test it, and uh, also explanation of the corresponding threat. So all the relevant items in the standards that are connected to OpenCRE will be presented if you link, if you have just this link to this one common requirement, because that's the sort of entity, the thing that OpenCRE manages, common requirements. Uh, CRE stands for Common Requirement Enumeration. No more mappings, that's the result of this. So as a standard, you do not longer, no longer have to manage all the links with all the other standards, with the ISO and with the NIST, et cetera, et cetera. You just use OpenCRE because it has inherently the mappings in it. And I'll explain a little bit more about the mechanisms uh, later. So what is it? Uh, you can find it at opencre.org. It is the product of the Integration Standards Project. We released uh, the first version two years ago, and before that we were two years uh, preparing this. And it's actually uh, the result of a longer effort of mine to try to unite standards. But I've sort of um, accepted that these standard initi initiatives <coughs> need to work on their own, and that the solution is in connecting them to each other, which is why we built uh, OpenCRE. And not just Spiros and I, but many collaborations. We got a large grant from, from OWASP to uh, have developers extend it. Spiros is an excellent uh, developer. I'll, I'll chime in uh, occasionally. And we've worked with SKF and the OWASP Top 10 and the ASVS, uh, OSSF, and the Cloud Security Alliance, who recently embraced OpenCRE as their way to link to other standards from the cloud control matrix. And from the website, there's this definition. It's an interactive database for smart access to security standards and guidelines when designing, developing, auditing, testing, and procuring for cybersecurity. It links and unlocks these resources into one unified overview, allowing easy referencing, searching, browsing, and asking questions. Because we have all these standards in this catalog, and this allows us to search all these standards, to search the actual text of the standards and we've trained um, and applied a large language model that allows the users to ask questions for which these standards will be used as primary source. And by doing so, we created the world's first security chatbot, which provides more reliable answers uh, on security uh, compared to other chatbots. And this is a list of the standards that we met. Uh, it's, it's a large selection and it's, it's ever growing. Recently, we added uh, OWASP SAM, uh, for example. What does it look like? Well, let's have a look. Here you see one of the OWASP standards. It's the collection of cheat sheets. You're probably familiar with them. They're very hands-on, they're really nice. 
and sometimes you want to refer users to, to more information, right? That's the main use case here. So when we go down, there's the section that says, okay, uh, about secrets, storing secrets. Well, if you want to learn more about storing secrets, just go to the OpenCRE page on this, and it is one link to the re common requirement of secret storage, and it starts saying, okay, we have a lot of requirements that are contained in this, about using key folds, about how to store passwords, about uh, how, how not to store secrets uh, in your code. So all the responsibilities, all the elements of secret storage are connected here in this, this catalog. And before we dive into one, let's go down and see to what standards this is linking. So it's linking, of course, to the, the cheat sheet that we just were in. It links to uh, OWASP SAM uh, on uh, secret management. Well, let's have a look. So SAM is about uh, you know, maturing your, your secure software development organization. Um, there are deep links here. So if I go to SAM, there's an explanation on how you implement this as a process that you can mature in your secure development. Um, and at the bottom here, there's some further guidance. And when I open that, I can see a link back to OpenCRE. So that's the general idea, connecting everything resource to resource to OpenCRE. And because this particular resource from SAM points to OpenCRE, we parse this and we use that as information on how to link from our catalog back to this particular website, which means that SAM doesn't have to maintain a mapping, doesn't have to maintain a list of which section of their files link to which sections of OpenCRE. They just have to add the hyperlinks and submit their website to be parsed by OpenCRE. So this way, it's, it's self-maintaining, right? So if they move around stuff and the hyperlink moves with it, it will automatically update uh, the hyperlinks at OpenCRE. This is one of the key mechanisms in how we've, uh, how we've implemented things. Um, there's also a nice reference here, uh, wrong secrets. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is the work of mainly Jeroen Willemsen, which is a project that has uh, nice training material and actually uh, testing cases for storing secrets. Very helpful if you're implementing this in your organization. OpenCRE points you to this resource to incorporate. Perhaps it's very helpful for you. And again, uh, of course, uh, at the bottom, there's again a link to OpenCRE. Again, the general idea is how these standards link to OpenCRE and by doing so, link to each other. Because by this tool linking to OpenCRE on secret management, it basically indirectly also links to the corresponding uh, entry in SAM that I just demonstrated. But it doesn't have to mention that link to SAM, just the link to OpenCRE. I think you get the general idea of it. Um, there's some more information. There's some structural information like this topic is part of secure data storage, which again is part of technical application security controls. And there are related topics like cryptography. And from there, you can learn more from NIST resources that will help you with crypt cryptography explanations. Uh, and also a link with uh, an ISO control. And then there's the requirement of that you need to document your explicit key and secret management with, again, links to different standards, uh, the relevance of secret management and your, uh, uh, your build pipeline and your deployment, with, again, links to the corresponding standards, authentication, so everything is, is right there uh, at, your, at your fingertips. So again, it started the overview with anything that's part of secret storage. And one of the things is, for example, store cryptographic keys securely. Well, if we click on that requirement, we again will see the link to the corresponding CWE, uh, a NIST publication on it, the cheat sheet for cryptographic storage, but also there's a cheat sheet for key management. Really nice to, to be aware of this, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically the mechanism of, uh, of OpenCRE. How did we approach this problem? Well, this is to illustrate that if you have four standards and you need to create mappings, there's just a lot of work involved, but there are more than four standards. There are hundreds that you would prefer to, to link to or at least allow your, your users 
to uh, to have a look at to see if it's relevant for them. But it's an, a sort of an exploding problem if you try to do this mapping. We solve this by introducing common requirements, and which means that if you have a certain publication, you just need to link a certain section to the corresponding topic at OpenCRE. And by doing so, you also link indirectly to another standard that is also linking to that same topic, just like I illustrated uh, in, the, in the demo. And this is actually, so this idea of having a common repository is one of the recommendations from ENISA, uh, is a European uh, cybersecurity uh, organization, very influential. And uh, their conclusion was that it is necessary because there are so many commonalities between standards to, to map these commonalities in the form of, uh, of, of these common requirements, which is what we've done with OpenCRE. So let's say you have uh, a common requirement on restricting XML parsing. There is a link to the the threat, to understand the threat, a link to the weakness, a link to the testing guide, uh, and a link to the, the cheat sheet, for example. And by these standards linking to this common requirement, they automatically link to each other. And this is the report by Enisa that I, uh, that I mentioned. Develop a common repository for shared security measures. The second problem was if you have a certain standard uh, that talks about um, uh, storing secrets, you want to link to OpenCRE, but there are 15 requirements at OpenCRE that you then need to find that are relevant. And this is also tedious and error prone, which is why we've introduced uh, higher level topics. So there is, uh, for example, um, a certain store cryptographic key security topic, but it is part of the topic secret storage. And if you have a publication on storing secrets, you just have to link to this higher level topic and the open series structure will take care of linking through to all these requirements uh, automatically. And by doing so, we've created um, sort of a semantic web, if you will, of, of, of common requirements and how they are interrelated. And to illustrate this, well, I think this is um, a nice visualization, but I can show you, oh, let's, let's just do that. I can show you something that Joko Obrenovic built based on our API, which is really cool. Um, he built uh, this. So he built a 3D visualization of our, our catalog with all the topics there, like your technical application security controls, and there's uh, secure communication, and then there is a TLS, and here is log relevant uh, elements. So just to illustrate the complexity of that, that catalog that basically represents the consensus uh, of how uh, topics are interrelated. And uh, I can see some of you thinking, well, what if I don't agree with how these things are connected? Uh, but because indeed, these are typically aspects of security that are opinionated and also depend on what industry and what role you, you come from. And the problem is actually solved by having cross-links. Because some people will say, yes, yeah, session management belongs to authentication. No, it belongs to authorization. No, it's cryptography. And uh, it, it's all interrelated. And if you write a book, you need to have a uh, a uh, content structure, like a table of content, that makes sense. And for the table of content, you need to make decisions. But if you create a semantic web and you just uh, define links between different elements, it is much easier to establish something that people agree on because everything is connected into some way and because you're not tied to having one tree but actually can build a semantic web like you see b before you, you can uh, deal with that problem, deal with those different opinions, and create a structure that has a consensus. And that structure is part of the OpenCRE database, and it's also open source, so it can be extended if you want, for example, more granularity in a certain area. And the, the highest granularity, because that's where OpenCRE originates from, is in technical application security controls, and it slowly got more and more and more process and information security management controls. 
but it was extended uh, iteratively, iteratively, if you will. So that's the catalog. And these are the main sort of clusters. There's, there's governance topics, there's uh, development process topics, there's technical controls, there's operation topics, and cross-cutting concerns. Because there are some elements, like cryptography, that are cross-cutting. They, they touch so many different topics that we group them in a, in a specific cluster. And if we zoom into those two yellow bubbles there, there are two common requirements. One is the restrict XML parsing again, which is part of input and output protection. And <coughs> there were certain standards linking to that, you know, deep level uh, requirement of restricting XML parsing, but also at the level of input and output validation, there are publications that uh, sort of uh, have sections that are at that level of abstraction. And you can also find more information through exploring this catalog. So the catalog makes it easier for standards to link to parts of open theory, but they also allow users to yeah, browse around this catalog, like I demonstrated with uh, if you're working on uh, storing secrets, there is a link to cryptography, and from there you can go to other topics to learn more. The third problem that we needed to tackle is um, that standard change, so links break. And this is to illustrate what I described earlier. Uh, if a link breaks, you need to update the mapping, unless you do this, unless you store the CRE, the, the common requirement link, which consists of uh, six digits, by the way, which are completely random. There's, there's no meaning behind these digits. You store these links in the form of hyperlinks in the documents that you manage. And because OpenCRE watches these documents and scans them, uh, if you change something, if you change, for example, the, uh, the URL or your domain name or whatever, it automatically is updated in the mappings of OpenCRE. So those were the three main problems. So the exploding mapping, we solved that by having these common requirements. Uh, then there is this breaking links issue, which we solved with letting uh, the standards maintain uh, the links to, uh, to, uh, to OpenCRE. And being able to quickly link to a whole range of common requirements by having this catalog, this, this hierarchy basically, in our, in our database. Next up is open Siri chat. Um, let me see some hands. Uh, who of you before this session heard of open Siri? Yes, about half of you. Okay, very good. Um, who of you heard of open Siri chat? Okay, three, three hands, three hands, okay. Uh, we need to <laughs> advertise more because this is uh, this is actually the coolest thing I've ever built uh, with, uh, with the team. Uh, credit where credit is due. It was Sheriff uh, Mansour who came up with the idea, thinking that, wait a minute, if you have all these standards um, yeah, sort of um, unlocked and access to which section, which hyperlink, access to the resources, and relate them to each other, you have all the data that you need in order to empower uh, a large language model, which is the content of all these standards and how they relate to each other. So you can use OpenCRE chat to ask any security question. Um, let's uh, go to OpenCRE. Let's go to the chat. And I can, for example, ask uh, what um, metrics can I use to uh, measure progress of my secure software development program. In a moment, I'll explain you what it does under the hood right now. Uh, what's important about it is that it uses all the standards that we have uh, to inform the large language model, which is, by the way, a Google Palm uh, model. So many kudos to uh, Google for collaborating us uh, to, make this, uh, to, make, to make this happen. 
and kudos to Software Improvement Group, my employer who, who sponsors the model, uh, model costs. And I ask the question and I get the answer. It talks about, well, the SAM model has a recommendation and it's about effort metrics, result metrics, environment metrics, and you get an explanation. And very importantly, you get a link to the actual section in SAM and also a link to the common requirement at OpenCRE to learn more and also to validate this answer. And this is a big difference with typical large language models where you don't get this reference and this you know, ability, this feature to have a look at more information. And the way it works is like this. Oh, before, we, before I show that, two uh, nice things that happened is I got some, we got a lot of uh, responses all around the world and it's being used uh, very intensively right now, which is great to watch. Uh, from people from Japan saying, wow, this is the first time uh, I can uh, access uh, standards in my own language. And that we didn't even realize this, but of course, large language models, they are sort of language agnostic. They understand the patterns uh, behind the language, which is sort of th their view on reality. But I can ask it a question in Japanese and it will answer me in English or in Japanese uh, or, or in Hin Hindi or whatever, uh, German, Dutch, um, even though the, all the standards are in English. And it will provide me with sample code with in perfect Python or whatever I prefer, uh, but with the comments in Japanese, uh, which is mind-blowing, it's, but it's really cool. And it has some uh, protection in it, uh, but protection of large language model results is a really difficult thing, which means that uh, it, it's so it tries to be very reliable by using these standards as input, but it can hallucinate. So if you come up with um, uh, a non-existing threat and you ask uh, uh, how do I protect against this threat, it will assume that this is an existing threat and just think up something and give you a sample code of something that's completely made up. And that's typical for large language models. There's, well, that, that's just part of, part of the game. Uh, and another thing is that uh, it has some protection. So we had a user asking it, how would I hack into the Wi-Fi of my neighbor? And then it would say, well, you can't do that uh, because that's, uh, that's illegal. Uh, but then <laughs> the user said, what if I, in theory, would uh, want to attack my, uh, my neighbor's Wi-Fi? And then just gave a nice list of how you could, could do that. And that's also sort of uh, um, exemplary of the state of the art of large language models. And we'll have to deal with it. So we try to inform users of, of, these, uh, yeah, of these disclaimers. Uh, but all in all, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. It's for the use case of uh, security, at the security standards level, it's the best uh, large language model uh, out there because we use this in-context learning approach and it works like this. So you ask a question and uh, it will match your question using the large language model by looking at all the resources and all the little sections in the resources to find what section matches your question the most. In this case, in this example, it is the attack surface analysis cheat sheet by OWASP. And it injects the text from that cheat sheet into the prompt in which it asks the complete question to the large language model. And it says, please answer the original question by taking this information as primary input. And then it has the entire text of the cheat sheet. Uh, that way we sort of uh, prime the model into using this vetted information as the main resource and it can use the rest of the internet to, uh, to, to add to it, which makes the answers more reliable. But also, uh, you get a reference to the standard and you get a reference to, uh, to OpenCRE. So I encourage you to use OpenCRE chat. It's, it's free to use, just like uh, OpenCRE is uh, entirely. Map analysis is the latest feature that we added. We actually added it uh, uh, this week, which means uh, yesterday. <laughs> uh, but of course, it was uh, nicely in staging before and we, we tested it uh, through and through. What it does, uh, it's we're really proud of it, is you can just enter two standards, like in this case, the cloud controls matrix and uh, ISO 27001, uh, the annex controls. And for every cloud control matrix control, it will give you the list of ISO standards that are related, ordered by to what extent they are related. And also, so uh, if this would be a demo, I would hover over one of those 
uh, ISO controls and it will give me the path to it. So it will explain that, yes, this is linked to cryptography and because cryptography uh, uh, is then linked to uh, this ISO control, that ISO control is there. And we use the whole graph of how things are connected to calculate the strength of the relation and it will show the most strong relations uh, at the top of the, top of the list. How is this helpful? Well, if you are, for example, implementing uh, the cloud controls matrix and you already have uh, an information security management system, you can use how you've implemented those ISO controls to implement uh, the uh, cloud controls. It's very helpful for compliance reasons. Yes, so let me repeat the question. The question is, uh, what does the zero mean? Zero means that uh, this ISO control here at the top is linked to the exact same common requirement as the cloud control uh, threat and vulnerability management uh, is. Yeah, so those direct links are, are, are the strongest, but we've learned that it's also interesting to see the links that are related through another common requirement because there's associations. Mm. Wrapping up, so why open CRE? We want to democratize cybersecurity. Uh, we want to enable engineers, security officers, testers, auditors, um, and procurement to find security answers. We want to enable standard makers to, to refer their readers, want to make their lives easier uh, so it's more comprehensive, it's more clear, and also robust, mostly against time. Um, and we also want to enable standard makers to be fine beca found because, um, because now the cloud control matrix is an open CRE. People that use open CRE will see cloud control matrix entries in open CRE and be referred to it. The bonus, and this is the underlying goal, is attaining shared understanding in the industry through having this universal translator. So having this consensus of what it all you know, comes down to. Uh, ma management, compliance, security officers, vendors, clients, everybody to align more because yeah, w we see that as a, a big issue and uh, I'm sure you can relate to it in the, in, in the industry. And also to achieve more consistency and less gaps between standards because if you have open CRE, which is a l reliable and powerful way to refer your users, you can fo focus your standard writing work on what's specific for your application and all the generic stuff for that refer using, using open Siri, which will make the uh, incentive for standards to be more precise for their specific application area uh, greater. Our call to action, use OpenSiri.org. Spread the word if you like it, or share it on whatever platform you use. Uh, even if it's TikTok, that's fine. Um, use the search function, use the browse function, uh, the chat function, of course, and increasingly you will uh, get more and more referred by tools, by standards, using Open Siri. So it will be there, uh, maybe even not visible because we have an API that tool vendors, for example, can access, that they can use to create the links. We just want to empower that. There's no um, advertising on open Siri or any other you know, earning models. This is all open source and just from our mission to, uh, to deal with this, uh, this problem. You can join the mailing list, you can contribute, join our team. And if you are a security author, and many of us are because many of us write secure coding gu guidelines or uh, baselines or whatever, um, start adding Siri links to your work. We have really easy ways to do this. Even if you know just the CWE, you can use that CWE to provide an entrance into our catalog. You don't even have to look up the common requirement that, that corresponds to it. Uh, your benefit, so you don't need to write everything yourself. That saves you time on finding references. Links will never break. And your standard becomes instantly findable through Open Siri. But also, because the Cloud Security Alliance uh, is now in Open Siri, uh, OpenCV chat will also know more about the cloud control matrix and use that in the, uh, in the answers that people have. And if you're a standard maker and you want to influence the, the strategy of OpenCV, uh, join our stakeholder group 
to help steer the uh, CRE direction. And this is the way. I'm convinced that this is how we're going to solve that mapping problem. We're not going to solve every problem in security, but this is something that we deal with uh, every day. And uh, thank you much for your time. I'm happy to take questions. Thanks, Rob. Uh, is there any way to, like, the mapping one that you've shown, is there any way to tweak that, to give input to that? Because we did a mapping from SSDF to SAM and vice versa, mm -hmm. and I just checked online. It works very well, but there are some things which, which don't come uh, out the same way as we did the manual mapping versus the, I guess it's somehow automated yeah. uh, for, for, the, for there. So is there any way to give feedback and say, okay, this mapping would better be tuned slightly and that, that it's, opens it's your It's on GitHub. So uh, the, 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 the quickest way is a, is a, is, is a PR, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also enter an issue or discussion or reach out to us. But this happens. We um, try to link uh, uh, SAM to OpenCRE. We've linked SSDF uh, to OpenCRE. And there might be discrepancies between how standard makers uh, see certain sections uh, because we are right now doing most of the mapping uh, but at the moment that the standard makers take control over it that problem will be gone so it will be completely in your resources so you just have to change your files but for now we'll have to talk to each other okay uh, so quick question on the a uh, little bit of clarity on the, the link that I would use for linking to OpenCRE, mm -hmm. and uh, have you seen use cases where uh, I get questions on an RFP from a customer, and you know maybe we have a standard that we apply to, and putting that into their response, into their RFP, so they can go link out and see all the things that are related to what we do. Have you seen that be a use case as well? Uh, I haven't seen it, but the use case for linking a, a set of requirements quickly to the requirements that you're familiar with is a perfect application of that that, uh, that, that map analysis uh, feature that I showed. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but map analysis is out for uh, one day, but that will be uh, the feature. And the link to use, um, so if you know the common requirement um, that matches a certain section of your standard, uh, you can link to it directly using these, these six, six digits. We have uh, several ways to find this. You can use search, you can use browse, but we also can use the large language model. Uh, if you provide us with the content of your standard, we scan it and uh, by using uh, embeddings, we can do a first mapping of your content to OpenCRE, and then you only need to adjust that. But the, st the, the, the easiest way uh, is to use uh, a specific standard that you already are mapping to, which can, for example, be CWE, mm -hmm. and use the smart link feature. So if you go to OpenCRE.org, on the homepage, there's an explanation of how this work works. You do OpenCRE.org smart link CWE 611, and it takes you to the OpenCRE common requirements that links to uh, 611. So it's an, an easy entry into the catalog. Okay, and none of that gets fed back because I was thinking like if we update internal you know web pages that link out to this information because you mentioned about like guidelines, mm -hmm. so writing many guidelines for different development teams. And you know, putting a link in there, none of that is information that's being pulled back. You know, in, in no, any no, way. No, no, no. Yeah, it's a one. It's a one way. I'm just linking out to the site to get additional information and reference additional material. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you? Uh, well, I'll let her ask that question. There's a gentleman uh, in in the far right back. And there were some questions here. We have time. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask if there's a uh, an API that you can use if you're trying to consume the information, not trying to update my own standard, I'm trying to I'm trying to maybe use an API to search programmatically for things or, or what have you, rather than use the, 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 the browser or the UI. Um, and then is there a way to like, is there a, a source of downloading the categories and structure that you have already as, a, as an offline document, so to speak, and I might, might have other use cases? Uh, if you want to see the complete structure, there are different ways that you can visualize them uh, uh, graphically or, or textually on our, on our website, just to have the overview. If you want to um, have access to it through an API, if you go to our GitHub, there are, there's documentation on how to use this, uh, and it's being used a lot. So there's, for example, Grant Angers, who uses this for Cornucopia, and he scans the, um, 
uh, no, he uses the API to get access to our catalog to automatically create the content of his uh, threat modeling uh, cards. So the API is, is quite rich, and if, if it's, it's, uh, it doesn't serve your use case, we'd be happy to, uh, to help you. This gentleman over here. Yeah. You, you listed a lot of um, uh, standards. Uh, do you have a roadmap for, uh, for all including other mo um, standards like uh, uh, 624443? Yeah. Something like that. So 624443 six uh, and uh, PCI DSS are our next. We actually had an automated mapping of PCI DSS, but we felt it, it needed uh, some some manual intervention to improve. But we're very close to having that added. And we have some volunteers to do 6243 because that's, that's quite an extensive and great standard to add. Uh, but those are our short-term uh, short uh, uh, ideas. And for the rest, it's up to the industry what they find uh, as important to add. What's the approach uh, in consideration to versioning from the, uh, the standards, either going back to old versions or how things are pulled into the pipeline. Yes, um, ver versions are important. So they are on our feature roadmap. That's one of the next things that we want to accomplish. And because uh, we have this database and it's being updated, we can apply version management on it very easily so that you can go back in time basically and say, okay, so at that point in time, how did these standards uh, uh, link to each other? And also because you have um, not just changing insights, but also newer versions of standards, and some organizations, they use uh, ASVS uh, version 3, and others use version 4. We want to accommodate that. So that's, that's upcoming. Is it, is it currently accurate to say that uh, it's just the latest version of each standard? Yeah. Inside the tool? Okay. We, we did have the previous uh, OS uh, top 10, the 2017 version, in there for a while. That's also a way to deal with it, just to uh, yeah, include the version number in, in the standard and ha let it be shown as a separate entry. That's sort of a, uh, a poor man's uh, version management. Uh, but that's a way for us dealing with the lack of that feature right now. Thank you. I think that concludes the question. The last question. Then. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry. So it's a twofold question. Number one, do you, is there, uh, it's more towards the frameworks that are available. Um, is there a framework similar to what MITRE has for security at large that would detail out specifics in application security? And second, is there a framework that has more details specific to application security? Because many of these are more generalized frameworks. Uh, could you rephrase the question? Rephrase. So yes. many of the frameworks that you're mapping to address security as a whole, not necessarily focus only on application security, at well least the way I see it. Yes, this is true. Uh, so is there a framework more with more details for application security? And then I'm referencing MITRE, because they're slightly different. They're not a controls framework, but they're a framework for mapping out s actions to yeah. address. Yeah. Is there something like that for application security? Uh, there is, um, for example, ASVS, which, which is included in the open theory, which I think is one of the most comprehensive uh, technical application security controls frameworks. Um, there are others out there, and we're open to, uh, to include them. Uh, but, um, so 6243 is, is an example. Uh, ICS, so industrial control systems. But it's... it's it I'm sorry? Uh, IEC, yeah. Uh, ISA, ISA, IEC. Really? Okay. Okay, I thought it was ISA, but uh, all those uh, acronyms. Um, <laughs> but but the, the interesting thing about industrial control systems, um, the 6243, is that it's actually, when you look at the, the, the secure development processes, is one of the more advanced uh, standards describing those, uh, and it's uh, completely reusable in other industries, other, ex uh, uh, other applications, not just, uh, not just ICS. So which is why we very much wa want to add 62443, um, and that's 
to the yeah that's the extent in which I can uh, answer your question then it's time thank you very much for coming <laughs> <laughs>